Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing NEO stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. NEO is an automobile manufacturer. It designs and develops electric vehicles. In 2016, NEO announced that it had been given an autonomous vehicle testing permit by the California DMV, and it would begin testing on public roads. It plans to launch vehicles with level three and level four autonomy. In 2018, it opened its first battery swap station in China. Tesla was never able to develop large scale battery swapping, but instead Tesla relies on its supercharger network. Although NEO has built a functioning network of 700 battery swap stations that cover several thousand kilometers of Chinese expressways. In May 2021, it announced an expansion into Norway. In 2019, NEO announced a partnership with Mobileye to develop a consumer car equipped with Mobileye's complete level 4 self-driving system and there is a chance they will start selling those cars this year, in 2022. The company is headquartered in Shanghai, China and was founded in 2014. It trades on the New York Stock Exchange, Deutsche Börse, Mexican Bolsa, Bulgaria, Bern, and London Stock Exchange. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 48 billion market cap. They're trading at $30 a share and they have 1.6 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. They did have a big negative in 2018 and 2019, but it looks like they're starting to break even in 2020 and the trailing 12 months. They did have a small positive in 2020. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses, and that's negative every year. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that looks amazing going from 800 million to 5.3 billion. This is the company's income statement, and this is from Yahoo Finance. All the numbers are in Chinese ones. I converted all their financials to US dollars in my Excel spreadsheet. If you want to convert to US dollars, you can just divide by seven. The top line is the revenue of the sales, below that is the cost of revenue, these are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit, and that's been looking really good. It was negative in 18 and 19, they had their first positive in 2020, then a big positive in the trailing 12 months. Below that is their operating expenses. These are all the expenses not directly related to generating the revenue. Gross profit minus operating expenses gives you your operating income, which is negative every year, but the negative is getting smaller. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt. Then below that is other income and expenses. These are all the gains and losses not directly tied to their core business. Below that is their pre-tax income, then their taxes, and the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which is negative every year. This is their third quarter income statement from their latest quarterly report. This shows us in Chinese ones and US dollars. Vehicle sales in the third quarter was 1.3 billion. Other sales is 181 million. Other sales is regulatory credits and battery upgrade services. The expenses related to the vehicle sales were 1.1 billion. The expenses related to other is 113 million. So they had positive gross profit of 309 million. R&D is 185 million. Selling general and administrative expenses is 283 million. Their operating expenses are 460 million. So their operating loss is 154 million. But this number is improving. Possibly this year they'll have positive operating income if they could keep growing their revenue. They spent 12 million of interest on their debt. They did generate 37 million of interest income on their investments. They had a loss of 5.5 million from equity investments and a gain of 5 million from other. They had a net loss of 130 million or 835 million ones. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates or loses from its operational business. So they finally had positive operating cash flow. That's a big deal for any company. It was 2 billion ones in 2020, which is about 300 million US dollars. And it was 2.5 billion in a trailing 12 months. 
So things are really looking up for this company. Of course, they spend a lot on CapEx because they manufacture cars, which is pretty expensive. They need warehouses to manufacture those cars, also expensive machinery and equipment. That all goes into CapEx, and that's carried on the balance sheet and depreciated over its useful life onto the income statement. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And it was positive in 2020 for the first time, mainly because they had low CapEx that year. They could have had positive free cash flow in the trailing 12 months, but it looks like they invested a lot that year into CapEx. That's how Tesla has grown so much, investing so much in CapEx, constantly growing their brand. Since they lose money almost every year, they need funds from somewhere to run their business. So they issued debt and equity. They issued 7.6 billion ones in 2018, 35 billion in 2020, and 20 billion in the trailing 12 months. When a company issues common stock, it increases the shares outstanding. It makes your shares less valuable. And every year they issue more debt than they pay down, so they're adding debt as well. This is the equity section on their balance sheet. They have 3.8 billion of equity. They raised 12.5 billion from selling their business, and they lost 8.3 billion from running their business. This is in US dollars. And it looks like they bought back some stock, 287 million. I'm not sure why they bought back stock since they're losing money. Let's look at the capital structure. 4 billion of equity, 3 billion of debt. They're 56% equity, 44% debt. And they could pay off all the debt with the cash in their balance sheet and still have nearly $4 billion of cash left over. So they are well capitalized from doing all those capital raises and taking on a lot of debt. I gave them the lowest whack on Finbox, 8.8%, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated seven years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year seven, that's 38 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today's new weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $26 billion. We divide that by 1.6 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $17. They're trading at $30, so they're trading at a 79% premium. It's a sell, according to the model. Their revenue is projected to grow 27.7%. So I grew at 27.7% for the next seven years. That's how I got their future revenue estimates. The average company in their industry converts 10% of their revenue to free cash flow. So that's how I got that future free cash flow. I multiplied their revenue by about 10%. It's a lot harder to value a company that does not have positive, consistent financials. So obviously investors feel the stock is worth more than $17 a share. They're willing to pay $30 a share currently. But as you know, things change a lot with the stock market. If there's positive news or negative news about a company or about an industry, a stock could go way up or way down in a matter of days. Simply Wall Street also thinks the stock is overvalued. Their valuation is $18. Seven analysts price this stock and the average price target is $62. The low is $45, the high is $87. So pricing a stock is different from valuing a stock. When you price a stock, you're saying what people will pay for the stock. When you value a stock, you're saying what the stock is worth. The company had 24,000 deliveries in the third quarter which is almost exactly double third quarter of 2020. So they grew 100%. That was 5,400 ES8s, 11,000 ES6s, and 7,800 EC6s. So you can see every quarter was at least double the prior period last year. Fourth quarter 2020 was more than double fourth quarter 2019. First quarter 2021 was five times first quarter 2020. In the first quarter of 2020 in China, everybody was locked down. Second quarter of 2021 was more than double second quarter of 2020. In the fourth quarter, NEO had 25,000 car deliveries. That's up 44%. Xpeng had 42,000, up 222%. Li had 35,000, up 144%. And Tesla had 308,000. You can't buy NEO in the US. But the cost of a NEO in US dollars ranges from $57,000 to $99,000. Tesla's range is $40,000 to $140,000. Xpeng is the cheapest, $23,000 to $59,000. This is where the stock has been trading the last two years. It would have been great to get the stock down here, but I know a lot of people picked it up up here, and the price has been cut in half since the beginning of the year. But I do think there's lots of upside with this stock. 
because as you see, they are growing. Sales are going up, deliveries are going up. Plus, I think they have the most advanced battery system. And if they can use that to leverage their brand and possibly help other car companies with their battery technology, that can really catapult the stock. The stock is really volatile. It has a beta of 2.46. It moves two and a half times the market. It's gone down 37% in the past 52 weeks while the S&P is up 28%. 52-week low was 28, the high is 67. And the stock is on a decline, trading well below its 50-day and 200-day moving average. When you see the 50-day moving average drop below the 200-day moving average, which this did, that's called the death cross. That's a bearish signal. There's a ton of activity on this stock. 50 million shares are traded each day. Of the 1.6 billion shares outstanding, 1.3 billion are on float. 39% are held by institutions and 3% of the shares are shorted. Their employee count went up, then it went down, which is interesting. They currently employ 7,800 people. If you put $10,000 into this company when it started trading, you would have been down a lot for a while, but if you're still holding on, you'd be at $50,000 today. That's a 60% annual return. The general public owns half the stock, institutions 31%, individual insiders 11%, and public companies 9%. The founder and CEO owns 10% of the company, 165 million shares. The next biggest shareholder is game giant Tencent. They own 8.5%, then Bailey Gifford, BlackRock, and Vanguard. Let's look at their financial ratios. We can't look at the PE since they have negative net income. Their price to sales is a bit high at 9.0. That's stock price over sales per share. Their price to book is also high at 12.2. That's stock price over book value per share. Let's look at their non-current assets. This is in US dollars. 936 million of PP&E, 200 million of long-term investments, 364 million of right of use assets, and 700 million of other. Their current ratio and quick ratio are 2.0. So they can cover their current liabilities with their current assets two times. Let's look at their current assets. 3.4 billion of cash, half a billion of restricted cash, 3.4 billion of short-term investments, half a billion of accounts receivables, and 264 million of inventory. Let's look at their current liabilities. 800 million of short-term debt, 100 million of lease liabilities. These are probably the lease payments on some of its factories. It's a present value of those future lease payments discounted back to today's dollars. Another $240 million of debt and $1.1 billion of accruals. These are expenses the company has incurred but hasn't paid it yet. In the trailing 12 months, they had negative $14 million of free cash flow and they have $4.4 billion of working capital. Working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. So they're really well funded. They have lots of cash on their balance sheet and they're getting to the point where they're not really losing much money. They may start to even make some money too. So it looks like it could be a really good opportunity even if the stock is overvalued because if they keep selling more and more cars each quarter and beating their previous numbers, the stock will continue going up. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. There are 27 companies in the same industry as NEO. The average company spends a little over $3 billion in CapEx. They spend $2.6 billion. Their debt to equity ratio is pretty close to average. Below one is a good debt to equity ratio. They still have negative free cash flow. The average is positive $2.3 billion. Stellantis has the most free cash flow of $13.4 billion. They represent a lot of car brands. Chrysler, Fiat, Dodge, Maserati, and a lot more. NEO ranks 8th in market cap. They have 48 billion, the average company is 72 billion. They're worse than average in price to book at 12.2, average is 7.4. They're doing well in price to sales at 9.0, the average is 31. Their revenue is lower than average at 5.3 billion, average is 8.2 billion. Toyota is number one by far in revenue. To summarize, I have them trading at a 79% premium. This is a really hot industry. Everybody's looking for the next Tesla. And lots of people have mentioned NEO as being a big player in the EV game in the future. So it seems like a good play, especially if you feel Tesla is overvalued. There seems to be a lot more upside with this stock than Tesla. What sets NEO apart from other EV companies is their battery system. 
If they continue growing that, they may be the go-to place to get battery charging for other EV companies. I rank their free cash flows 3 out of 10, their revenue 8 out of 10, and their ratios 3 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.